All right, so we're going to begin our first session and our first session has less to do with me and more to do with you. What I want you to do, it says group discussion unit number one. There are th four questions. Number one, in your opinion, what are the two major reasons why the church or your church is not growing? Number two, who do you think is most responsible for church growth and why? Number three, if you had the authority and resources to change or help the church to grow, what three things would you do? And finally, what is considered a good percentage for growth each year? 10, 25, 70, or 90 percent? So we're going to do it in two stages. Number one, I want you to write down what you believe to be the answer to these questions. Don't discuss it with your, you know, your, your seat mates, the people at your table. Just write down what, what is your opinion. Not your church's opinion, not what the elders think. What is your opinion? And after you've written those questions down, I'll tell you, you know, it's time to start discussion. I want you to then share your opinion that you've written down with the people at your table. Everybody got that? We good? All right, you've got 10 minutes to answer those four questions. Go. All righty, we're going to start uh, kind of uh, getting some feedback. So if you can uh, stop the discussion uh, among yourselves and maybe kind of come back to me here. We'll start getting a little feedback from the different, uh, from the different tables, different individuals. See what you had to say. Okay. Question number one was, and uh, we'll, we'll start over here, start over here with this uh, table and work our way this way around, okay? Uh, in your opinion, what are two major reasons why the church or your church is not growing? I have any ideas from, from you guys? A couple of things kept coming up. One was, there's a lot having to do with what we think is the culture. Our society is, is really um, working against that. And then number two was just a lack of a, a personal uh, or every member really sensing their, their obligation to be involved in helping the church to grow. Okay. Uh, anyone else uh, have uh, some ideas about that? One of the things that we said is this people uh, are just not interested in church growth. We just... Which people? All of all the people. It part people outside, people in the church. We're just. It doesn't seem to. There doesn't seem to be any interest. And uh, besides that, people are basically just not willing to do what it takes to grow. Okay. All right. How about uh, back over here? This table, the troublemaker table. Let's see what they came up with. Yeah, we need more involvement of all members. All right. Okay. So and the reason that the church is not growing is because all members are not involved. Is that saying it the, you know, in the reverse? Just as much responsibility for you it is for me or for somebody else. Okay, mm -hmm. fair enough. <coughs> Anything else from you guys? Also, I'll put down there, we need more information to be, to be put out to the general public as who we are and why we are here. Yeah, somebody mentioned brand. You know, uh, Bud and I were uh, talking before and uh, we were kind of you know, discussing this idea. And the idea is we have such a good thing. We're like the best kept secret in, in America, you know, as far as religion is concerned. The big religions with all their fancy theologians and you know, their big think tanks and everything, what do you think that they're coming up with as the solution to their problem? <laughs> well, we need, they say we need to simplify. We need to go back to the Bible. We need to cut out stuff that we've been doing for two centuries. They're coming around to this idea. So we've got a marvelous idea. We've got a terrific approach. It's just that nobody knows about it. And a lot of times not even our own members know about it. So yes, absolutely. Well said. Let's move to a question number. Anybody else would really like to share on this first two major reasons why the church or this church isn't growing. Somebody else want to share on that? We want to think that we ought to keep our congregation in the eye of the public as much as we can uh, every, every day, not, not just uh, once in a while when we're going to have a meeting or something that we advertise the congregation. Right. Okay. 
Sure, everyday involvement. Mm -hmm. Okay, someone else? There are two things that came up in our group. One is, it's not my job, it's not my responsibility. We pay people to do that. Right. And the other thing is, we've kind of lost our identity with the uniqueness of the gospel message. We've allowed ourselves to be blended in with the denominational world, mm -hmm. and we haven't come out of that yet. And right. once you realize you've got something special and unique, you want to share that, and right. we've lost that unique feeling. Terrific, that's a good point, and that's a great segue, because my next, uh, my next uh, lesson here, the first session we're going to do, is going to talk about that. Let's move on to question number two. Who do you think is most responsible for church growth, and why? Well, I think the right answer would be me, and uh, the why is that we need to be out in the world seeking others. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, who do you think is most responsible for church growth and why? I haven't heard a w the why yet. I think, I, think, I think the who is kind of, you know, let's face it, we're preaching to the choir here tonight, right? We kind of know who's responsible for church growth. We are. But the why, why is that? Well, I said why is because you need to seek others who are lost. I guess I left that part off. Okay. Anyone else have a why? Yes, we were given a great commission to go out and preach. Yeah, because Jesus said to go out and preach, that's why, because it's been given to us as our mission. The mission is not church growth, obviously. The mission is preaching the gospel. Church growth is a spinoff. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, uh, talk about number three. If you had the authority and resources to change or help the church to grow, what three things would you do? We came up with an idea. We think we should uh, get a hold of the high school and have uh, Phil Robertson come to the stadium. <laughs> that would get just about everybody in town uh, in front of somebody from the church. All right. You'll have to get in line on that one, of course. <laughs> but exactly. We have, to, we have to exploit the resources that we do that we do have, absolutely. Good idea, I mean, you know, why not? Even if you do have to get in line, right? Even if you said, well, you know, I'm free, but next April, okay, so what? You know, next April, uh, you, you've got something to look forward to. Okay, if you had the authority and resources to do something to help the church grow, what would you do? Somebody else, another idea? We had to have an open forum about biblical authority. About biblical authority, okay. Back there? The mainstream media is doing its best to turn the, this country from God. We should use that mainstream media in our local community to turn people to God. Hey, I mean, people are spending a lot of money to sell soap, right? Or to uh, advertise, I don't know, uh, you know, whatever, bars and other things, sandwiches, to sell sandwiches. Why wouldn't we pool our resources to not sell, but to promote and to expose uh, the community to the gospel? We're going to talk about that a lot in this, uh, in this seminar. Okay, someone else, one more over here. One of the things we thought about was uh, making a variety of resources available. I mean, we're, we're talking about this as a resource. We're talking about, we, we started talking, how many of us remember the Jewel Miller film strip series and how many people that brought to Christ. And then it, it died off. We quit using it, but other people could probably still use that same medium. Right. So using a multitude of methods and medium. Right. And one of the reasons why they stopped using that particular film strip, I mean, the content was great, uh, but eventually they, it became dated. You know, nobody uses film strips anymore. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the people who were in those strips, you know, they had zoot suits on and, you know, I mean, lapels that went all the way out to here. And, you know, it just, it was the 50s. It, it was great. The content was great, but they never kind of updated the content. And I might even put a little plug in for BibleTalk.tv. You know, BibleTalk.tv, that's today. That's the internet. That's, you know, that's what people do uh, with the uh, Christianity for Beginners. They use it like the Jewel Miller film strip. They pop the DVD in and hold the remote in their hand and they watch the first lesson and wait for questions. And some say, oh wait, I have a question. They just pause it, go ahead, ask your question. And so that's how you know, modern technology today, modern resources does exactly, the same, does exactly the same thing. Sharing the gospel with someone using a piece of uh, equipment or technology that enables you to 
to teach. Even if you yourself don't have that skill, you can still find something or someone to help you. Okay, anybody else? One more over here. We uh, talked a little bit about the Joy Bus program that we used to have here in our community that served our purposes very well. Um, it, it appears that if, if you bring the children in, the parents will follow when they notice a difference in their children. Mm -hmm. And so we thought that might be another area that we could look at here as a congregation. Okay, all right. All right, last question, excuse me. <clears throat> what is considered a good percentage for growth each year? Uh, I'll make this simple, okay? How many people said 10%? How many people said 25%? Wait a minute, some of you are raising your hands twice. Well, 10 to 25%. Okay. How many people said 70%? How many people said 90%? How many people said 100%? Yeah, I heard that. It wasn't on the thing, but they... He... All right, so here's the stats, okay? The stats. For all churches, not just Churches of Christ, but for all churches, Presbyterian, Methodist, Baptist, uh, whatever, Churches of Christ, Catholic, whatever, for all churches, statistically, the average growth per year, and when I say average growth, I mean people who have left because they've gone on to their reward, or they left because they moved to Kansas, or they left because they were mad, uh, actually, you start with the people that came in, people who were baptized, people who moved in, who placed membership, subtract those who left net growth, okay? The average for the U.S. of A, three to five percent. Three to five percent, that's everybody. Three to five percent. We're going to talk about those percentages as we go along. Okay, well, we just wanted to kind of get the blood flowing a little bit and get the sandwiches digested. We're going to take a, a three minute break in case you want to go fill up with some water or use the restroom and then we're going to actually begin our first session, our teaching session in about three to four minutes. So take the break, do what you need to do and we'll start our session for tonight after.